incompatibility can lead to significant sludge formation. Significant sludge formation can lead to basically engine blackout. It can be as bad as that. There's always a danger in putting cost before quality and the, the, the challenge is that the fuel buyer is not always the fuel user. Um, and what's required with regard to value for money from the fuel buyer is not necessarily the case for the, the operational management of the vessel. The 0.10% sulphur cap introduced in January 2015 for emission control areas brought complex and far-reaching change to the marine fuel market. There are two basic types of marine fuel, distillate and residual. Distillate fuel, commonly known as marine gas oil, MGO, can comply with the eco sulphur cap. And residual or heavy fuel oil, HFO, that typically has a higher sulphur and asphaltene content and should not be consumed inside an eco unless a scrubber is used. Fuel accounts for a high percentage of a vessel's running costs and operators therefore look to secure the best price. However, when procuring HFO, the cheapest option is not necessarily the best, as it can often contain a high level of asphaltines. If bulk fuel oil has been stored for long periods, it can become unstable. This can cause the asphaltines to precipitate out, creating sludge, which has the potential to block pipes, pumps and filters. The higher the asphaltine content, the greater the sludge potential. Related to this is the issue of fuel compatibility and the problems this can cause. If fuels with greatly differing asphaltine content combine, these asphaltines can coalesce into sludge, potentially blocking filters and pipes, leading to engine starvation and power loss. Essentially, that could lead to, worst case scenario, a vessel losing power in a critical position that leads to a marine casualty. Fortunately, there are precautions that can be taken to help minimise compatibility issues. Avoid mixing bunker fuels from different sources. Choose fuels with a similar viscosity and density. Do not mix HFO with MGO. If you are going to the expense of buying an ECA compliant fuel, you need to ensure that it is going into a clean tank and also a tank that is not being used for other products because that will elevate your sulphur levels and bring you out of compliance. When bunkering, always test a sample blend to ensure that the mix of the fuels won't trigger compatibility problems. Is the fuel going to cause any potential damage to the engine system when it is used? It's very, very important for the crew to know exactly what they've received such that it can be treated appropriately before it is injected into the main engine. There are two basic test methods, sediment and spot testing. Sediment testing is generally carried out in fuel testing labs. The sediment test within ISO A217 is the total sediment potential test. This looks at the material that is contained within the fuel. The sediment test itself, uh, the fuel is maintained at an elevated temperature overnight for 24 hours and it is then vacuum filtered to look at the residual weight of the sediment that is actually present within the fuel. The simpler test, which can be completed on board a vessel, is the ASTM 4740 spot test. For this test, a blend of fuels is homogenized and heated before being dropped onto a test paper, which is then placed in an oven at 100 degrees Celsius. After an hour, the paper is removed and the resulting spot compared to a reference chart. If the two fuels are compatible, you should see one large spot without an asphaltenic ring in the middle. If the two fuels are incompatible, you will see the development of a black ring within the initial spot itself. To help reduce compatibility problems, ExxonMobil has developed a range of premium ECA category products that bridge the compatibility gap that can exist between distillate and heavy fuel oil. ExxonMobil Premium HDME 50 is a heavy distillate fuel which is compatible with MGO and is ECA compliant. And ExxonMobil Premium AFME 200. Tests show that this advanced fuel is fully compatible with ExxonMobil Premium HDME 50 and marine gas oil, MGO. With regard to fuels, we're starting to enter an era of pushing boundaries 
it's actually getting that information out into the marketplace it's putting it in a in a manner that operators can easily understand and most importantly it's about um, the implications of the new fuel and what that means to handling operation and indeed the efficiency of the engine in this program we have looked at the compatibility and stability issues that arise when operating with different category fuels avoiding fuel mixing asphaltine precipitation and sludge buildup and fuel testing procedures in the next program in the series switching fuels we'll look at changing between high and low sulfur fuels as vessels move in and out of eco zones for further information and guidance on fuel compatibility visit the website at exxonmobil.com forward slash marine.